My heart is to see God's people full of passion and the fire of God, hungry for His presence on a daily basis, full of His power and having a positive impact on the world and those around them, living a life of freedom and victory. This is Running With Fire. Hey, it's great that you could join me today. I trust that you've really had a fantastic week. Every so often I share a message that really reveals the passion of my heart. Today is one of those messages. Our nation of New Zealand has really drifted far from God. We see an increase in statistics of suicide, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, immorality. You know, the list goes on and on and ungodliness is beginning to take a real grip over the land. My heart's cry is to see an awakening in our nation and to see it transformed and godliness to reign. The scripture says godliness exalts a nation. In this message, I want to share what I believe are four keys to this transformation taking place. Prophecy was given in 1606 by Pedro Ferdinand de Querios, who proclaimed the islands of the South Pacific and Australia and New Zealand as the south land of the Holy Spirit. God's destiny for your nation is that this be the land of the Holy Spirit. Who reckons that would be cool? You know, the, the Spirit of God just being poured out. You know, one day you say, oh, you know, Massey High School, God's poured out, students being saved by the hundreds. Downtown in the city, a, a whole apartment block are giving their lives to Christ. People are falling on the streets under conviction of sin. Hey, New Zealand is turning to Jesus. Headlines, New Zealand Herald. What's happening in New Zealand? Holy Spirit moving in power. Come on, church. Who reckons that'll be awesome? That's, that's the call. That's the destiny. That's what's been prophesied over our nation. You are not living in New Zealand by chance. How many of you know that? God has got a plan and a purpose for you. You are a part of the answer to reaching New Zealand and the nation. It is why you are alive. Try not to get sidetracked into living life. And remember, your primary purpose of being in New Zealand is to help reach this nation, make it the land of the Holy Spirit, and reach the nations for Christ. There's great contention. You don't need me to tell you over our nation right now. The, the level of drug abuse, suicide, violence, child abuse, alcohol, moral decline is incredible. It's like the, the devil is just running roughshod all over this nation. Do you know why I reckon that's happening, friends? I reckon Satan knows that New Zealand is marked by God to be the land of the Holy Spirit, to see a mighty revival. So he's made up his mind. He said, okay, I'm going after headquarters. This nation is a danger to me. And he's pouring his filth and his power and gross darkness. And you know, some of the laws that get passed, it's almost like New Zealand leads the way. If there's a terrible law, oh, where can that go for? Oh, New Zealand, we'll get them. And they almost lead the way in some things. So the enemy is really targeting our nation. He's really targeting you. And the church, unfortunately, is not making a lot of progress in our nation. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's good churches, there's big churches, but honestly, listen, friends, Satan doesn't care about big churches. He doesn't. He cares when people are being saved and churches are being built on new believers. That's when he starts getting wound up and upset. Otherwise, he's quite happy with what's happening. And the number of New Zealand uh, Christians in New Zealand, percentage, really, it's not increasing. If anything, it could be decreasing. We are in serious trouble. We've got to do something, church. We've got to make a difference. It's time to live up to our name. New Zeal. New Zeal. Land. That's our call. That's who we are. You're a person of new zeal. Tell the person next to you, new zeal. Come prophesy it over them. Yeah, new zeal. Okay, so how are we going to reach New Zealand and the nation? I'm going to give you four principles or five. They also apply to fulfilling your own dreams. The first one is you're going to need faith. Now, don't jump past this too quickly because it's going to read in Romans 4, verse 20 and 21, some really cool verses which say this. Have you found it? He did not waver at the promise of God to make New Zealand the land of the Holy Spirit. 
and give us a great revival. Is that in your Bible? It should be, because I just put it into mine. They're not waving the promise of God. I mean, do you believe? How many of you are absolutely expectant for a revival to break out fairly soon? About 5%. It's probably why we haven't got it. If we all got expectant, seriously, it's faith, you see. Expectancy is faith. God would move and something would happen. Friends, we've got to start believing. So, did not believe, waver in unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Being fully convinced. Fully convinced. Yeah. Are you fully convinced there's going to be a great revival? Yeah. I am. I am fully convinced that what he had promised, he is able to perform. Why? Because God is a promise-keeping God. What he says, he is going to do. You know, one of the messages I believe God's given Church Unlimited to declare across the nation and the nations is this. We can get the job done. Meaning the body of Christ, together, we can get the job done of reaching New Zealand and reaching the nations for Jesus Christ. And uh, the main vehicle through which God has given us to proclaim this message is New Zealand and beyond. And so you can be very sure, listen carefully, the devil hates New Zealand and beyond. He, he doesn't want someone getting up and saying, hey, New Zealand can be one for Jesus. Come on, pastors, leaders, stir up your church. Go out into your street and your neighbors, your community. Tell people about the love of God. The devil's looking down from heaven and he's saying, I have got to stop this message. And though the devil is throwing everything he can at us to slow us down and stop us, friends, we will not back down. We will not retreat. We will not surrender this nation and its call to the devil. We will fight with all the energy and strength that my God will give us. And we just want you to partner with us and help us because we're taking on a tremendous challenge trying to mobilize this nation to reach itself and to reach the nations of the world. But I believe God has called us to do this. The Lord spoke to me right at the beginning about the purpose of New Zealand Beyond. We don't need another conference. But he said, Tark, I want you to help shift the church of New Zealand back into alignment with my purposes. And his purposes is that the church reaches a lost world and the nations for Jesus. Not just playing church and winning people from the church down the road, but actually going after a lost world, friends. And so that's the message we've been given to proclaim and we'll, well, we're giving it everything we can. Number two, the church, which is you, is coming to its finest hour. Let's go to Isaiah 60. Are you guys doing all right out there? Yeah. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over who? You. Did you get that? The Lord will arise over you. His glory will be seen upon you. Wow. Isn't that amazing? It's going to be seen upon you. No, no, not just the church, not everyone over there, but you, his glory is going to be seen. See, in the midst of great darkness, towards the end of, the, of this age, the church is going to shine like a beacon of light, displaying the power and the glory of God. See, gross darkness, friends, is covering the earth. Things are happening that should not be happening. See, the church is coming to its finest hour, friends. We're not going to be a church living in retreat, in fear of the enemy, waiting for God to come, Lord Jesus, and take us out of there. No, friends, that's not what's going to happen. We're, the church will be in its finest hour, walking in the power and the authority greater than the early church. The glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. Friends, I have given my life for this, believing that there will be an outbreak of God in my lifetime. Friends, I will not be denied by the grace of God. The best wine has been kept until the last. What the early church began in glory, the last day church is going to finish in greater glory than ever before. 
We will see what others have longed for. The church will be functioning at its prime, at its peak, at its very, very best. Yes, darkness will cover the earth. But friends, think about it. If Satan can throw darkness on our land, alcohol, drug abuse, sexual violence, immorality, if he can throw a darkness after darkness over this nation, friends, how much more can our God shine the light of the glory of his name over our nation? and make the darkness look as nothing. Who is greater? Tell me, church, God or the devil? My God is greater. He will rule. He will reign supreme. Satan, you will not have this land. It belongs to Jesus. It will be the land of the Holy Spirit. From the north to the south, the east to the west, the cape to the bluff, we are going after this nation and the nations of the world. That's just not excited nonsense. We believe that. We believe that, friends. The final harvest, friends, will be a reaping of everything that's been sown on the earth, good and evil. You see, both evil is coming to maturity. You're seeing it like we are seeing things we never dreamt we would see, friends. Come on. Just watch the TV, I think. God, I don't believe I'm seeing this. It's unthinkable. Evil is coming to maturity. And friends, believe me, it's going to get a lot worse yet. A lot, 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 lot worse. But also the good and the light and the glory is going to come to maturity. The church is coming to its finest hour. You are coming to your finest moment. You are coming to the reason for which you were put on planet Earth and put in this nation of New Zealand. Your best days are not behind you. They're still in front of you. Keep going forward. March towards a bullseye for God. I don't care if you're 20, 30, 70, 80 or more. There's been prophetic voices over recent times that modern stadiums were actually not built for sporting events. They were built for the church to hold massive gatherings of God's people worshiping the King of glory, the master of the universe. The As One event we had recently, over 3,000, maybe 3,500 people at Waitakere Stadium. It was an incredible event. But I want to suggest that God orchestrated this stadium to be built for the church so we could have As One, and we didn't have to put one dollar towards its construction. There's a church in the United States, they meet in this massive stadium as well. I'd like to think that Eden Park has been renovated for the church of Jesus Christ. (laughs) Hallelujah! Come on! Let's claim it for Jesus! Vector Arena, any of those big places, get in there and take over. God's always a step ahead of the devil. Next time you see a big stadium going up, thank you, Jesus. One in Dunedin, one in Christchurch. Come on, Jesus, give us some more. We're going to need all of them. We'll need every one of them. Imagine them all packed out at the same time, right across the nation. Everything closes down, every stadium in New Zealand. Phil, friends, and if there's a revival in the nation, those stadiums won't be big enough to hold everybody. I don't even know what I'm saying this morning, but I think it's all right. Bit of faith, bit of fire, bit of passion. Push the boundaries. One of our staff, listen to this, had a dream 11 years ago. You won't believe this. In the dream, they were aware of being in a large stadium, overlooking fields usually used for sports events. Astounded at the number of people who came for the gospel, and a hush came when everyone was looking up, saw this beautiful white dove, and its wings spanned the entire stadium. She began to weep in her sleep. The husband woke her up to see if she was okay, which she obviously was. And she went on to say, I believe we're going to see revival in West Auckland. Friends, as one, as one was a partial fulfillment of this dream given 11 years ago ago. My God is on the move, friends. These are incredibly exciting days for the Church of New Zealand, and the New Zealand Beyond is a big part of that. Third thing we're going to need if we're going to reach New Zealand and the nations 
And that is every believer walking in the supernatural power of God. Every believer. Mark 16, 78, you know the story. These signs shall follow them that believe, lay hands on the sick, cast out demons, drink things that won't hurt them, all that kind, all the power of God. How many, how many here believe in Jesus? These signs shall follow them that believe. Tell the person next to you, signs should be following you. They should be, friends. God's power is for everyone. He wants a whole generation of people walking in the power of God. Friends, a day of the, there'll still be superstars, megastars, fine. We don't mind that. But God wants hundreds, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of born again believers, all ministering in the power of God all across the planet, demonstrating that God is alive. He's not dead. He is risen. And friends, you demonstrate that when you manifest the power of God in and through your life. See, God will show his greatest miracles in the last days. Think about it. Greatest darkness? Obviously, greatest miracles. And you know what I'm waiting for? You know what I reckon I'm kept for? Signs upon the earth. I reckon we're going to, like, you know Moses? He saw those signs in the deliverance of Egypt, uh, Israel out of Egypt. I believe we're going to see signs on the earth and the stars, the heavens. I don't know what it's going to be like, but I'm ready for it. I believe I'm going to be a part of seeing that. Oh, yeah. Gross darkness. But incredible light, the church is coming to its finest hour. It's going to be in its prime. It's coming to its zenith. It's coming to its glory. These are great days to be alive in the church of the living God. To reach New Zealand and the nations, it's going to take more than a few new strategies Methods and techniques, as good as they are, they'll never get the job done, friends. The basic biblical approach of Jesus and the apostles, that'll get the job done. What was their approach? Preach the gospel, work miracles. End of story, nation gets saved. Nations get saved. They say Jesus spent 60% of his time ministering supernatural power. What a question for all of you. Who's ready for a question? How much time do you spend ministering supernatural power or trying to? Just go through a day. How much time would you be, you know, praying for someone, believing for a miracle? What, what percentage? I mean, how many of you are followers of Jesus? Yeah, I am. He's our model, right? He spends 60%. I thought to myself, I probably spent a quarter of a percent, maybe, believing for miracles. And you're probably not much different, and that's probably why we're not getting the job done. Friends, every opportunity, every day, we should be reaching out for God and believing for some supernatural manifestation of God, whether it's praying for a sick person, whether it's a breakthrough in your home and your family, or, 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 or someone else that you know at work or something, that's something that demonstrates to you that God is alive and real and powerful. Because if you and I don't experience regularly the power of God in our lives, and I say on a daily basis, we become very religious. And religious people are a pain. They're hard. Just look at the Pharisees. They had all the knowledge, friends, but they didn't have the power. So you and I, friends, every, I want you to encourage you every day, go after the power of God. Go after a miracle. Come tonight and believe for a breakthrough in your personal situation, a breakthrough in your family, your finances, your debt, your mortgages, your health, your healing, anything. It's time, friends. Every believer experiencing the power of God. Of God. There was a man praying in a, down in a, I think it was a shopping mall somewhere, not in New Zealand. There's an amputee, comes in a wheelchair. So he thinks, right. This is what he said. He said, okay. He said, I believe the kingdom of God's already in me. He said, I believe resurrection power's already with me. How many of you believe Jesus already in you? Yeah. Holy Spirit's in you? Resurrection power's already in you, right? So he said, I believe that, so I'm going to demonstrate what's already in me. So he prayed for this man, this amputee. And the guy's legs didn't grow, didn't get healed, but the man started to cry. And he said, what's happened? He said he'd been healed of a chronic stomach ailment as he was prayed for. Crowd began to gather. Another lady comes out, foot's all bandaged up. There's a problem with it. So he prays for her. She rips off the bandage, completely healed, walks back to work. And he said the reason, friends, that he experienced God's power was he wasn't praying, thy kingdom come. He was saying, thy kingdom has already come. It's in me. I've got power. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to step out and minister God's love to others. And he saw the power of God flow in a powerful way. Friends, I reckon there's one step between you and the supernatural walk with God. Step out. Have a go. Do something. 
At work, if someone's sick, pray for them if they let you. If they don't, well, then just step away. Number four, it's time for action. It's time to get involved in reaching New Zealand and beyond. You know, in the West, churches, and mostly, many people are overtaught and under activated or mobilized. Overtaught. They say most of you, seriously, could go to a third world developing country and speak in their Bible colleges. You know so much. So much. The problem is, we don't do a lot with all the much we know. I mean, if we, I mean, if we did 10% of what we know, most of us would just be full-time for God doing, to serving the whole time, going, just going for it everywhere. But we don't. We, just, we have the knowledge. And so we need to move a, a step from the knowledge to actually doing something and helping reach people. See, what happens is this, is that people, they come to church. Okay, so they worship. It's great. Fantastic. They hear the word, great, fantastic. They've been to church, fantastic. Then they walk out the door and do very little. And so there's come in the church, this big chasm between worship, word, church, and then doing something to reach people with the love of God. And it's like this chasm is it's almost a, a, a gigantic leap across from here over to there. And friends, that's what New Zealand and beyond is all about. We're trying to get people, yeah, look, you, you worship, fantastic. You hear the word, wonderful. But hey, we now want you to take the next step and do something. It's time for action. It's time to tell people about the love of our Savior. It's time to go the next step and help reach this lost world for Jesus Christ. And you and I are part of that answer. That's why we have New Zealand Beyond, because we want to stir up pastors, leaders, churches, and say, hey, look, you're doing great, fantastic. You've got the first three bits in place. Worship, word, church, great. Can we help you cross the chasm? You see, friends, because when churches and you and I cross that chasm, New Zealand is going to start to be one for Jesus. Yeah, that's right. yeah. If we never cross that chasm, all our worship and all our word it will not make an ounce of difference to our nation. Friends, let's ask ourselves a question. After all these years, why are there no more Christians percentage-wise in our nation than 50 years ago? Is that a good question to ask? You see, because worship, word, church won't do it. We've got to cross the great chasm. And that's where New Zealand and beyond comes in. That's why the devil will fight this conference for all he's worth. But he won't win. Because Jesus is on our side. And he will help us win the victory. My final point today is that it's time for a new surrender. You know, it's very easy for you and me, and I put myself in here as well, to be very focused on ourselves. You know, we think, well, my, my family and you know, my, my finances and my, my job and my ministry and you know, my, my dreams and, you know, my, 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 me, all about me. But you see, repentance is not just turning from sin to a new direction. Repentance is really a shift of consciousness where the focus goes off me and onto God. And see, friends, if you and I would make that shift, seek first the kingdom of God, then I think there's a lot of these things that we worry about would actually be taken better care of. But see, we tend to put our focus there, and then we give our, our bit to God, and we do reasonably, but it's almost like that's the focus, and then this bit we get to God, and we wonder, well, God, why isn't it all happening and working out for me? God says, you've got the order wrong. He said, don't ignore that stuff, but if you'll put me first, I promise, Amen. seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. And I wonder whether that's really the message of the hour for our nation, for you and for me, that God has to now be very first. 
Someone said that there needs to come a reckless abandonment for the things of God. And do you know this? As I begin to wrap it up, one single encounter with God or with His presence can violently redirect your life's goals. One encounter, one moment in His presence, one word from heaven, friends, and I've, I've had that in my life, and it violently redirects the goals of your life, and everything changes, and I don't care how far down the road you are, I am ready for another encounter that will violently redirect my goals because I know they're nothing near what God would want them to be. Maybe they're not too bad, but I know God has got so much more in terms of my surrender to Him. And friend, that kind of encounter can uniquely take place at a conference like New Zealand and beyond because everything in it is geared. You know, you heard Bayless Connolly. He said God met with him at the conference. He said, New Zealand and beyond, you can't go wrong. And I believe he's right. But he encountered God in that. And he went back to the United States. And I know he said he was challenged by certain things. But friends, to have that encounter, you, it, it takes time. You've got to carve out time. Say, okay, God, I'm going to give myself to you. I want to reach out and touch you in a fresh, new, and a powerful way. There have been multitudes over history willing to sell all and purchase the pearl of great price. Where are you at on that spectrum? Selling all to purchase Jesus and his purposes for your life? Satan is contending for New Zealand. He is. And it's called to the nations. He's doing everything he can to stop it. But friends, while Satan's doing all that, at the same time, you and I, Church Unlimited, we are doing all we can to stop his rampage and help turn this nation to Jesus Christ so it becomes the land of the Holy Spirit that reaches many other nations also for Jesus. New Zealand and beyond is a big part of this. Will you partner with us in the greatest cause on planet Earth, serving our one and only Lord Jesus Christ, who gave everything for us. As I read through Scripture, I see revival awakenings take place over and over again. So I believe it is on God's agenda and God's heart to send a great awakening to our nation. Would you please join with me in praying and believing that God will visit us again. If you've enjoyed this message or previous messages, just remember you can see them on demand via our website. And hey, why not pass this on to others as well. Please join me again next week. Thanks for watching Running With Fire with Tark Barna from Church Unlimited. For more great free content, visit runningwithfire.com. You can send us your prayer requests, stream online TV and radio episodes, and view blog articles. You can also connect with Takbana through Twitter for regular updates. Church Unlimited meets at two locations in Auckland, New Zealand. You're welcome to come along for a visit.